I do, man. All right, let's turn, if you would, this morning to 2 Chronicles chapter 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And we'll begin reading there in verse number 8. Verse number 8, Second Chronicles 15. Verse 8. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Odin, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of these cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth day, fifteenth uh, year of the reign of Asa, and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, with all their soul. But whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word. We yeah. thank you for each one here this morning. We pray, Father, that you'll have your perfect will in each and every heart and life. Yeah. Lord, if there be a lost soul here this morning in the sanctuary, we pray that you might save them before it's everlasting too late. Yeah. That they would call upon you, dear Jesus, with their whole heart. Yeah. God, be saved, be born again. Yeah. God, we pray for your people, God, that you'd help us to live for you in these last days. Help us, Lord, to draw close to you, God and be everything that you want us to be, Lord. We want to be what you want us to be. We just thank you and praise you for all of your blessings, dear God. We ask in Jesus' precious name, and amen. 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 I read here in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verses uh, 8 to 15, and uh, we find out here that uh, these people here, the people of Judah, the people of Israel, they sought the Lord with all their heart, with all their whole desire. We read the verses here. And whoever would not seek the Lord was, be, was to be put to death. Yeah. Seeking the Lord is like revival. That's what, that's what we're getting ready to do, folks, here in a couple weeks. We're going to have a tent revival. And we don't want to just go through the motions. Amen. We don't just want to go uh, you know, through uh, the formation and so forth and that type of thing. You'll notice in verse 12, they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. In other words, this isn't just a half-hearted thing. This is with all their heart, with all their soul. Yeah. In other words, they're serious about it. Verse 13, that whosoever would not seek the Lord should be put to death. Verse 15 says, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. They sought him, seek him, seek him. Seek is twice in verse 12 and 13, and the word sought is in verse 15. That's why 2 Chronicles 7, uh, 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. And so I want to preach. Uh, we're getting ready to start having this tent revival two weeks from today. And... Uh, I usually preach a Mother's Day message. I've done it through the years that I've been here, but I'm not this morning. Our tent revival's in two weeks. And, uh, of course, mothers need revival, too. Amen. And uh, I've preached a lot of Mother's Day messages through the years each year that I've been here, the ten years that I've been here. And uh, But this morning, uh, I want to preach about why, 
have a tent revival? And why have a tent revival? So I'll be preaching to the mothers and fathers and everybody, all of us. Amen. And I'll be, pre I'll be preaching to myself. Amen. And uh, why have a tent revival? Somebody might ask, why do all the work getting the tent here and taking everything out of the truck and putting up the tent and then taking it down, all the praying that we've been doing and we are continuing to do till the end of the tent revival is over, uh, all the advertising and uh, all the expense and so forth. Why have a tent revival? Well, there's a lot of reasons that I want to give you here in a few minutes, but by way of introduction, I just want to say this, that one of the reasons we have a tent revival is I believe with all my heart, God's people need revival. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, revival is primarily for God's people. Yeah. All right, to be revived. Yeah. Revived. I remember, uh, I've said this before, I remember in Columbus, we'd grown up up there in our house, Dad, we had a fireplace, and Dad would get that poker when that fire started going down a little bit, going out, he'd start getting a little kindling and everything, and he'd get a little wood, he'd start stirring that thing around, and that fire would start back up again pretty good. And he rekindled, he revived yeah. that fire. That yeah. fire was dying out, man, it was just dying out. And a lot of God's people are just dying out. Amen. Amen. They're dying out spiritually. I'm not saying it to be mean, I'm just saying that. I'm talking about us here yeah. this morning, but I'm talking about the whole community. I'm talking about Highland County. I'm talking about the whole area, the whole region, really the whole country, yeah. and uh, really the whole world. But uh, we, we're having a tent revival because God's people need revive. Psalms 85, 6, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? One of the reasons why God's people are not rejoicing in God is they need revive. Yeah. Folks, it's been a long 15 months. Yeah. There's been millions of people die of this COVID. Yeah. My dad died of it in January down yeah. in Fort Myers, Florida. And uh, my sister-in-law, Tammy's in the hospital now in Portsmouth uh, with it. And her husband, Brian, got it. And, uh, and then my brother-in-law, Mike, uh, he's not saved. Uh, he's in Columbus Hospital with something different. But he's got physical issues going on and all kinds of things. I mean, people are hurting today. Yeah, really. There are millions of people in this country and around the world that have died. There's millions, several thousands, and I don't know, maybe a million or whatever, that's died in the state of Ohio. I don't know how many have died. I mean, a lot of people have been, not just the deaths, but a lot of people have been through a lot of things. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, we need revival. Amen. Yeah. Would you not agree with me this morning that Amen. we need revival yeah. as a church and as, as a whole area? Yeah. I want to give you some reasons real quick this morning. I won't keep you all day, but I want to keep, I want to uh, preach to you about uh, these people here sought the Lord with their whole heart, their whole desire, it says here. Yeah. With everything they had, they were not just they weren't just kidding around. They were being honest about it. They really wanted God to be first in their life. Amen. And I'm going to say, first of all, number one, that we're having a tent. People say, why well, have a tent revival? we got an air-conditioned building right here. Pete, folks, <coughs> we wouldn't have half the visitors if we had it inside this building. Amen. I'm just telling you, there's something about a tent meeting. There's something about an open-air meeting out in the open public out there. There's something about it. People will come to a tent. Yeah. That they will not come inside of a building. You say, hey, they shouldn't be that way. I agree, but that's just the way people are a lot of times. Yeah. But you know what? I, I love having this tent revival. I think I believe God can use it. And uh, we've had a lot of visitors. Last year, we, you know, we've got the bigger tent now, starting last year. And uh, we'll have it this year, too. And uh, we can spread out and everything. And uh, I'll tell you what, we've got a nice stage there and everything. You know, the, the guys come down from Columbus and set that thing up. Uh, they do most of the work. There's a lot of work involved in it. But uh, I tell you, God really blessed. And I'm looking forward to God blessing this year. But number one, let me give you just a few things. Number one, we're having a tent revival because a lot of people have religion but not salvation. Amen. We're having a tent revival because there are hundreds and thousands of people in Highland County and the whole region. They've got religion, but they don't have salvation. Amen. The Bible says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, Proverbs 14, 12. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, John 14, Amen. 6. Yeah. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Amen. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Yeah. A lot of people in this Highland County area uh, belong to a religion or a church. They've been baptized. They are upstanding citizens. They're good, sweet, dear people. And they're a member of a certain church or whatever religion, whatever it is. But they've never been truly born again. Amen. They're deceived. Folks, a lot of people are deceived. It ought to break our hearts. Yeah. 
Jesus said several times in the Gospels, take heed that no man deceive you. All right, Paul talked about being deceived. Let no man deceive you with vain words, he talks about. I mean, Jesus talked about it, Paul talked about it, several of the writers in the Bible talked about being deceived. And people are deceived today uh, about salvation. Paul, Paul said, but I fear thus by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted through the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. And in the next verse, in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3 and 4, he talked about people that preach another Jesus yeah. and have another gospel yeah. and another spirit. There's all kinds of gospels floating around Highland County. Yeah. You know, do this and that, you'll be saved. Do this and this, and you'll be all right. No, the, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection yeah. of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. So we're having a tent revival. Number one, I can preach an hour on it. Let me go to the second thing here. Because number one, a lot of people have religion but they don't have salvation. Number two, we're having a tent revival because there's people hooked and addicted on drugs and alcohol and pornography and gambling. Yeah. Yeah. You would not believe the people that are hooked on a lot of different things. Yeah. That's why we're setting up this tent out here <clears throat> as a lighthouse to the community. That all, whoever wants to come is welcome to come to the tent meeting. Anybody, I mean, come to our church, the tent meeting, whatever. Everybody, we're having a tent revival because there's people hooked and addicted on drugs and alcohol, pornography, gambling, and all the filth of the world that's hurting people's hearts and lives and damning souls. Yeah. It says that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 15, that the house of Stephanus, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They addicted themselves to helping the saints, yeah. to ministering to the saints and to the people in the community. But you know what? A lot of people today are, I have a message I preached years ago here, I believe, are, are you addicted from that verse? Are you addicted? And I go through and talk about how uh, a, an addict, I, I relate a drug addict with a person that ought to be addicted to God. Yeah. And I make spiritual application. Yeah. I believe the title is, Are You Addicted? And uh, Matt's got it back here on CD. But there, you can run it off. But uh, there's people hooked and addicted on drugs and alcohol and pornography and gambling and all these different things. And that's why we're trying to reach the community. People's lives are shattered. There's lives. I, I mentioned about Thursday there, Thursday night. I'm telling you, you talk to people, you look at people, and you observe the way they act and the way they dress and the way they, I'm telling you, it breaks your heart. Amen. Yeah. That's why we're having temporary revival. There's people hooked and addicted on drugs and alcohol and all this other filth. Number three, we're having a tent revival because people's homes and marriages are in a mess. Yep. That's a three-hour sermon. Homes and marriage. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Your home and your marriage will not be what God wants it to be Amen. until both of you are saved, the spouses are saved, and you have Jesus Christ first in your lives. Amen. Yeah. Psalms 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Yeah. Through the years I've had couples, not, not hundreds, thousands of couples, but I've had some couples come to me through the years, and they're not married, and they say, you know, we have problems, you know, and uh, temptations and stuff, and, and uh, what should we do? And I look at him, and I say, do you love her? He says, yeah, I love her. I look at her, I said, you love him? Yeah, I love him. Get married. Yeah. I'll marry you. Yeah. I'll marry you right here in this church, whatever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Homes and marriages are in a mess. You got homosexuals, lesbian, uh, you got uh, women with women, men with men, you got the transgender. We got people that don't even know if they're supposed to be a male or a female. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You know what you're supposed to be? What you were born. Yeah. yeah. What gender were you born? Yeah. What's on your birth certificate? Somebody told me the other day that now on their birth certificate, now these left wingers have got it to where all they're putting on there is an X or something like that. Is that true? Or something? they're not even putting the uh, the gender of the baby a lot of times because uh, when they grow up, they'll determine if they want to be a man or a woman. A bunch of filthy junk. Yeah. Our country's going to hell in a handbasket, folks, right before our very eyes. And the Christians, the church has been asleep for 50 years. That's why we're in, a, we're in the condition that we're in. That's why we're having a tent revival. Yeah. <clears throat> Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Yeah. 
Psalms 127, verse 1. I'm telling you, we, we need revival. Number four, we're having a tent revival. Think about this. We're having a tent revival because there's a great white throne <coughs> judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Is there not a great white throne judgment in the future? Yeah. Do you know what's going to happen at the great white throne judgment? John said, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Yeah. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. Yeah. Revelation 20, 11 to 15. That's going to be just as real as you sitting in that pew this morning. Amen. And you, if you're saved, you might see some of your unsaved loved ones get cast into hell. Yeah. You say, how do you know that? Because let me, let me read to you this. Uh, Daniel 7, verse 9 and 10, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, that's the Ancient of Days, that's God, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheel, wheels as burning fire. Daniel 7, 10, listen to this verse. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Those 10,000 times 10,000 that stood before him are the ones that rejected Christ that are getting ready to be cast in the lake of fire. But there's thousands that ministered unto him. That's the born-again Christians. Yeah. You said, what do you mean? I'm saying that you and I, if you're saved, are going to be at the great white throne judgment, not to be cast into hell. That's for people that rejected Christ. But we might be seeing our loved ones who rejected Christ yeah. be cast into a lake of fire. Yeah. That's what Daniel 7.10 says. It says, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and judgment was set, and the books were opened. The note on the bottom says, these are two classes of people at this judgment. One group is the accused that is brought in the final disposition. These are the ones that stood before him. The other group that ministered unto him is made up of saved Christians. They are called upon not only to judge the world, 1 Corinthians 6 2 says, but also to judge angels, 1 Corinthians 6 3, as the sons of God who replaced the fallen angels. We're having a tent revival because there's a great white throne judgment for people that are lost. And we Christians will be there ministering unto the Lord. I don't know what ministry means, helping God. I don't think we'll be helping cast people into hell. God will be doing that. But we might be there watching it. I don't know. Yeah. You say, I thought there was no more tears in heaven. There's no more tears after the judgment seat of Christ. Revelation 7, 17. And no more tears after the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment is in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, and then Revelation 21, 4, God says God will wipe, John says God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Folks, I'm telling you something, we've got to get serious about revival. Yeah. We've got to get serious about God in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> number five, I just mentioned this, I don't need to belabor the point, but number four, yeah. we're having a tent revival because... There's a great white throne judgment, number five, because there's a literal burning hell. I preached about the hell of hell here recently. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, a preacher in the 1800s, he said, the hell of hell is that it's forever. Yeah. It's forever. It's for eternity. Yeah. You'll never get out. If you're here today and you're not saved, you'll never get out. Yeah. I mean, if you thought you were going to get out in 100 years or 1,000 years, you might have a little hope. But you'll never get out. It broke my heart Thursday seeing these people out on visitation, knocking on doors. Yeah. Didn't it break you guys' heart Saturday going out? All you folks that went out Saturday yeah. out on visitation, you see people's lives. You see, 
You think you got it rough. You ought to go out on visitation with us one time. Yeah. You go out there, you knock on doors, and people start telling you all their problems they got. And on top of all these bad, terrible, horrifying problems they got, they're going to die and go to hell on top of that because they're not saved. Yeah. Amen. Breaks your heart. Breaks your heart. Yes. So I sit there talking to some woman there, and her husband was said he was working. She had a, she's holding the baby, and then she had like two or three kids around her feet, and hanging on to her, and everything. And and uh, you can tell she didn't have you know three cents probably. And uh, telling me all the problems and stuff, and her and her husband and family and different things, and her physical things with the kids and all that. I mean, I, I got tears in my eyes talking to the woman. Yeah. I said, honey, I said, you need the Lord. Yeah. You need to get saved. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's not a thing where you get saved and all your problems vanish. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you'll have God. I mean, the one that created everything, that knows everything, that has all power in heaven and earth. He's the one that can help you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We're going to have a tent revival because there's a literal burning hell. And that's where people are going. Jesus said, "Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell?" Matthew twenty three thirty three. He said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which are able to kill the body, but not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Talk about fearing God. Matthew 10, 28. Yeah. Number six. We're having a tent revival because there's a judgment seat of Christ for Christians. Yeah. Did you know that out in the future, if you're saved, you're going to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat? See, there's two separate judgments for two different kinds of people. There's a great white throne judgment and a judgment seat of Christ, separated by a thousand years. The judgment seat of Christ is for Christians, not to see whether they go to heaven or not. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Paisley's amen in me back here. Amen? amen. She's, getting, she's getting stirred up about this preaching, praise God. Amen. <laughs> amen. But there's two separate judgments. Separated by a thousand years. And there's a great white throne judgment for the unsaved who rejected Christ who are going to be cast into hell, lake of fire. And there's going to be a judgment seat of Christ. That the, and you, if you're saved, you'll stand at the judgment seat. And what the Bible talks about is that every man's work will be tried, not your sins. Those sins have already been taken care of when you got saved. Every man's work, it says three times in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12 to 15. And you're going to be tried as a Christian. Yeah. You're, and your work will be tried. And you want to have, you want to, you don't want it to be wood, hay, and stubble. Yeah. When God puts that match to it, you don't want it to go up and smoke. You want it to be silver and gold and precious stones yeah. instead of wood, hay, and stubble. I'm telling you folks, this thing is real. Yeah. You, you, want to be, you want to be faithful to the Lord as much as you possibly can. You want to be faithful to God. And be the Christian that God wants you to be. Because if you're saved, I want to tell you something. I'm going to stand at the judgment seat. Yeah. My wife won't be there holding my hand. My children, my five children, and my all my grandkids won't be able to stand there and say, He was a good daddy and grandpa, Lord. Be easy on him. No, it'll be me and the Lord. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it'll be you and the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5.10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Talking about Christians. Yeah. Not talking about unsaved. Yeah. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Yeah. Romans 14, 12, So that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. I have to give account of Steve Kogel's life after I got saved. To the Lord. Folks, that's a sobering thought. Daniel Webster, the statesman years ago, was asked, what is the most sobering thought that's ever come across your mind and entered into your mind? And Daniel Webster said, my, the most sobering thought that's ever come into my mind and entered into my mind is my personal accountability to God. Amen. Amen. We're having this temper Bible because... 
there is a judgment seat of Christ ahead for those that are saved. Yeah. Just as sure as you're right here, right now, if you're born again, you say, well, I haven't been really living that much for the Lord, preacher. I, well, you can start. Yep. You can start. Don't let the devil say, well, you haven't been living for the Lord, so it's too late now. No, the devil lied to you. Amen. The devil's Amen. a liar. Yeah. It's never too late to start. Quickly, let me give you this. You know why we're having a tent revival? Because people can die anytime. Yeah. Yeah. People die of all ages. And as is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, Hebrews 9, 27. David said, there is but a step between me and death. Amen. 1 Samuel 20, verse 3, David, David was running from Saul. Saul was jealous of him, and David, lost, uh, David got the kingdom, and Saul lost the kingdom and all that because of his sin and disobedience to God, and the long chapters there through 1 Samuel. And 1 Samuel 20, verse 3, he said, there is but a step between me and death. Saul was throwing javelins at him, trying to kill him and everything else. He said, there's one step. You realize there's one heartbeat. I'm one heartbeat away. I could... I could have a, I could have a aneurysm right now in my brain. I could have a heart attack right here in the pulpit. I just fall over dead. Yeah. I'm one heartbeat. I'm one step away from death. Right. So is everybody else. Yeah. I've told you this story before. I'll tell you again for those who didn't hear it. And then I'll go to my last point. I crushed this left hand back in 1980. At Kroger Bakery up in Columbus, Cleveland Avenue. I crushed it. Crushed it. They thought he was going to have to Dr. Haroon Aziz, India, doctor from India, reconstruction surgeon. They rushed me to Grant Hospital, long story short. And the night before the surgery, he came in, he said, I was 23 years old. He said, I might have to take your hand. Very badly crushed. Very badly crushed. I might have to take your hand. He said, I might have to take it right there. Show me where, right there. I got tears in my eyes. He left. I started crying. I said, God, I'm 23. Just been saved three years. Preaching two years. I said, God, I don't want to, I don't want to have a stub there the rest of my life. Well, thank God they didn't have to do it. Still got my, he said, you get arthritis at an early age. But I got my 40s. I'm a little older than 40 now, but I got my 40s. <laughs> I got my 40s. And but in the wintertime, man, that thing gets purple and circulation and everything. Thank God I still got my hand. Yeah. Yeah, man. But when I went to Grand Hospital, there was this little nurse. She just graduated from nursing school. She's a registered nurse. Beautiful girl. And she came in. She said, I'll be, I'll be taking care of you for a couple of days. I can't remember. I was in there like five, six, seven days. I can't remember how many days. But she'll be taking care of you for anything you need, this and that. Well, it was like the uh, second or third day she came in. That was the last day because they transferred her to another floor. But when she was leaving, I told her, I said, hey, I said, uh, and I, they had me on like uh, anesthesia and stuff. I was like out of it. But I said, hey, I said, I've got a, in my shirt pocket over there. She was getting ready to leave. And I said, in my shirt pocket there, I've got a gospel track in the, in the shirt uh, pocket there. I said, it'll tell you about the Lord. I said, would you please take that and read it? She said, sure, real nice. And uh, the last time I saw that girl, she was standing in the, in the doorway of the hospital there and looking at the track, reading it. I got out two or three days later, and my dad, who passed away in January of COVID, thank God he got saved, though, praise God. Uh, my dad said, Steve, because they came and visited me a couple of times, they said, that uh, nurse that you had in there, uh, he said, I, I think that's her on the front page of the Columbus Dispatch. I said, really? He said, yeah. And I read it. She had a boyfriend, and she's trying to get rid of him. And he didn't want to get rid of her. And she stayed with her grandmother. So he went over to her grandmother's and asked, for her, she came to the door, and he pulled a gun out and blew her brains out. Mm. Right there at the door. Last time I saw her alive, 23 years old, absolutely beautiful girl. <clears throat> Last time I saw her alive, she was standing in the doorway 
looking at the gospel track. Just got out of being uh, graduating and being a registered nurse like a few months before that. Got a job at Grant Hospital in Columbus. Trying to start her life over and get going, you know, in the right in the right direction, you know, and trying to get rid of this guy. And he didn't want to say goodbye to her. Yeah. You never know when people are gonna die. Yeah. Amen. You never know when people are gonna die. Yeah. That's why we're having this tent revival out here. I can't tell you the number of people that I have seen or I've talked to or people have told me they saw for the last time and then within a day or two they were dead. Yeah. I'm talking about all ages. I'm not talking about 60, 70, 80, 90 year olds. I'm talking about young people too. Yeah. Folks, we got to get a burden about this. Yeah. Yeah. And then last of all, we're having a tent revival because the Lord can come back any second. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew 24, 44. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Yep. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 18. I'll say this in closing. Why have a tent revival? Preacher, why have a tent revival? Go to all the expense, all the praying, setting it up, devil fights. I'll tell you how, how you know it's the will of God because how much the devil fights you. Fight your, your flesh fights you. Your devil fights you. You don't want us to have this tent revival. No. I, tell, I tell preachers, preachers find out we have a tent revival, and they say, when, how long do you go on your tent revival? I said, we go Sunday to Sunday. They said, what? I said, yeah, Sunday to Sunday. Because most churches are having little weekend meetings now. Yeah. That's all the Christians can handle. Yeah. Three days, man, they're pooped. Yeah. They're worn out. Three days of preaching, singing, uh, they're done, man. It's over. Yeah. Hey, come every service you can come. Yeah. We're going to go Sunday to Sunday. That's what they used to do. You know what? You know what that preaching does? Every night after night service does. It gets that flesh, it gets that flesh in submission. Yeah. That's why your flesh hates it. Oh, we've got another night of revival. Oh, that flesh. Ugh. That flesh fights. Yeah. The flesh and the spirit war against each other. Yeah. And what that what that night after night preaching does, it suppresses that flesh a little bit. Gets it down there like that. Yeah. You get shut your mouth, flesh. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Amen. Yeah. That's what it does. And it just wants to squirm out and say, I don't want no tent revival night after night. The flesh just fights. Yeah. And then the spirit, the spirit man can take control. Yeah. That's what it does. That's why we go night after night, preaching, singing, preaching, singing, preaching. Yeah. We gotta have it. Yeah. Our church, our area, our nation needs it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Why have a tent revival? Because a lot of people have religion but not salvation. They're deceived. They think they're saved. They're not even born again. Number two, because there's people hooked and addicted on drugs, alcohol, pornography, and gambling, and everything else. Because uh, homes or marriages that are in a mess. So what, what's a tent revival do? Somebody get right with God, a mom or dad, yeah. and, and be the mom or dad that God wants them to be, or the husband or the wife. They can turn that marriage right around. Amen. 
Yeah. See, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Number four, because there's a great white throne judgment ahead. Because there's a literal burning hell. Number six, we're having a tent revival because there's a judgment seat of Christ. Because people can die at any second, any time. Any time. And because the Lord can come back any second. Yeah. We're going to stand here in a second. And we're going to have an invitation. If you want to come down and pray, I want to pray right here. I want to pray for the tent revival. Yeah. I want to pray if there's anybody here today that's not saved, that you'll get saved. We love you. We want to see you get saved. Mm -hmm. And then also, we're, I'm praying for the tent revival. We're going to pray for the tent revival. So if you want to come down, maybe you're burdened or something. I know a lot of you are already inviting people to the tent revival. We've got, I think we've got some back here on the table. But, uh, liars. But get a burden for somebody. Invite them out. Look, people come to the tent that won't come inside a building. Let's stand if you would.